Now you've already seen how Windows PowerShell's formatting subsystem works. Unless you specify a format, PowerShell relies on its built-in configuration files to tell it to use lists or tables, to select the properties that are displayed, and so forth. You can create your own configuration files as well. Let's quickly review how PowerShell displays processes by default. I'll get all running processes by running get process or its alias PS. You've seen this output before, but I just want to make sure you remember that this is only PowerShell's default view. That default view comes from an XML configuration file supplied with PowerShell called .NET types .format .ps1 XML. In it, you'll notice a view named process, which is shown here. This view is valid for objects of the system.diagnostics.process type, which is the type of object retrieved by get process. The view defines a table layout, and it defines columns like handles, npm, pm, ws, and so forth, the columns you're accustomed to seeing when you run get process. It's this definition which causes PowerShell to display what it does when you run get process. By default, Windows PowerShell picks the first view that matches the object type being displayed, whether it's a service or a process or something else. Other named views exist. Since they're not the first one, you have to specify them, and you do that using the dash view parameter, which is available for any of the format commandlets. The trick is that the view itself must match the format you specified. So if you pick a view named Bob, and it happens to be a table, you can only specify Bob if you're using the format table commandlet, because the view you want is a table, so you have to use the format table commandlet. Let's take a look. Here's an alternate view from the same XML configuration file. It's also valid for system.diagnostics.process objects, and its name is priority. I can see from the XML configuration that this is a table control meaning it's a table-style layout, not a list or a wide view. So PowerShell contains this other view for process objects called priority. I'll get all the processes again and pipe them to format table, specifying the view parameter and the view name priority. You can see that this is a completely different set of columns. However, it's important to remember that this view was defined as a table layout. If I try to do the same thing again using format list, it will fail because there's no list view with the name priority, and the format list commandlet can't use a view which uses a table layout. You shouldn't modify the layouts provided by Microsoft. Those files are digitally signed, and the slightest change will break the signature and prevent the file from loading. That'll make PowerShell behave differently than you're used to, because suddenly all of the f default views that you're used to won't be loaded. You can, however, create your own format files which have the correct XML format. After doing so, load it into the shell by using the update format data commandlet. When you do so, you have a choice of appending or prepending your data to what's already loaded in the shell. If you prepend your data, then it comes first in PowerShell's list and will override any Microsoft defined views for the same object types. If you append your data, it will come last in the shell, and any previously defined views for the same object type will take precedence. Keep in mind that any format data you load is lost when you close the shell. If you create a custom view that you want to always be available, load it in your PowerShell profile script. Also keep in mind that if your shell's execution policy requires a digital signature for scripts, then you'll also need a digital signature for your format files. Remember that your custom view must specify the object type that it is designed for. You can get the full type name by piping an object to the get member commandlet. Right at the top of the get member listing, it will show you the complete type name. And you must have in your PS1 XML file the complete type name. Otherwise, PowerShell won't be able to make that match and determine to use your view when it's displaying that type of object. I've defined three custom views for processes. I'll start by importing these using the update format data commandlet. I want to prepend my custom views so that they'll have precedence over any other views. Now, I'll run get process, so you can see that it's one of my views, not the familiar PowerShell view, which is controlling the output now. PowerShell is simply grabbing the first view that's intended for process objects, and since I prepended my views into the system, 
mine become the default. I also look at my custom table view, my custom list view, and my custom wide view. You'll find my examples on your DVD so that you can use them as a starting point for any custom views that you construct. Here's where you will get messed up every single time. The XML tag names and the tag attributes are case sensitive. I know Windows PowerShell isn't usually case sensitive. This is not a PowerShell thing. It's an XML thing. XML is always case sensitive. This messes me up every single time because one little letter G in uppercase instead of lowercase will mess up the entire file and prevent PowerShell from reading it. So I recommend that you use one of the existing files as a template, since it's got everything uppercase and lowercase correctly, and just modify it to do what you need. Now here are a little trick or two to make things easier. If you import a format file and then decide to change it, maybe you, you took a good first guess and then you looked at the results but they weren't quite what you wanted, so you want to go back and tweak it, you unfortunately must close Windows PowerShell completely reopen it and then you can re-import the file. It's kind of annoying, but you, that's just what you have to do. So when you're testing, because you're going to be loading a file, ah, I didn't like it, loading it again, nah, I want to try again, I recommend that you store the format file somewhere where it's got a really short path name, like C test or C format, something short, because you're going to be typing this a lot. So keep it short, Always remember to close the shell, reopen it, and re-import after you make modifications. Pause this video and take some time to complete this lab. Use the lab guide included on this disk to guide you through the lab tasks. When you're finished, resume this video and I'll present a sample solution. You'll also find hints and solutions right in your lab guide. You'll find my sample .ps1xml file on your DVD and in the back of your lab guide. To load it into the shell, I'll use update format data and prepend my file. Then I'll try running get WMI object to retrieve the Win32 operating system class. Because my custom view is defined for this object type, and because my view was prepended into the shell, my view controls the output. I'm going to retrieve this information from several computers using this pipeline, and you can see that the result is a nice clean table that's an effective service pack inventory for that list of computers.